All right. Why, why don't we get started? Because we have a slightly tight program, and we want everyone's participation later. And you'll find out why. Ho hopefully, you've been to one in our one last year or ones over the last couple of years. But we changed our format a little bit. Anyways, welcome uh, to our 16th. Is that, is, that, <laughs> is that what you said? Uh, Bioinformatics Core Workshop. Sorry, as uh, Birds of a Feather, Special Interest Group, um, and Workshop for, for the past many years here at ISMB. I um, want to thank all of the organizers, Madeline Gogol, who's done the yeoman's work of pretty much uh, everything you see here, along with Hemet Kelker, Alistair Kerr, uh, myself um, to a small degree, and Alberto Riva. Um, a little bit about the core, core talk today. Uh, we'll have a set of lightning talks, basically, for the first hour, go over certain themes. Um, we will then break out into discussion groups for half hour, 35 minutes, discuss those themes, come up with different ideas, best practices, et cetera, challenges. Um, and then report back with, with some designated uh, person from that discussion group, come back uh, and talk to the rest of the group. We can synth synthesize ideas. And then we'll wrap up with a technology demo. Uh, generally, the themes are technologies and analytical methods. Um, you know, with the new uh, cloud computing and tools, uh, technologies, you know what and methods. Uh, what can these deliver, particularly for for a for a core facility, um, and how can we make them for a core facility perspective reproducible? And we'll talk about communication and training as well. A little bit about the Biomax core facilities um, special interest group, worldwide special interest group. We have a continued. Uh, large interest, 370 members and growing, um, primarily around ISMB. We usually get maybe another 20 or 50, 20 to 50, depending upon um, the year, additional members. And 70 core, cores worldwide. You can list your core on our wiki, bioinfocore.org. Uh, there's a list of all the core facilities there. Um, we have discussion groups in email. We have a mailing list. On the wiki itself, we have the minutes from this meeting, from past meetings, all, all of our previous slides. Uh, we have also a, um, a teleconference two times a year, more or less. Uh, we have the minutes of, of those. So those go over special topics. Uh, we go in depth for an hour, discuss, again, you know, sort of best practices. Um, if you have an idea to present at ISMB or um, on one of these teleconferences, we're looking for organizers uh, to help us continue that, that trend. Um, you can contact myself. You can contact Matt Madeline. Um, and let us know what, what you're interested in and what to follow up on. If there's something that generates your interest today, let, let us know. We can go much more in depth uh, within, a, within a conference call. We have a couple of events um, this week. Tuesday night, uh, ISMB itself is sponsoring all the cozies at Mark, Mark Holly. Um, we will be there. There will be signs up, so come join us there. We have a dinner on Wednesday night as, as well. For This is a traditional dinner that we have at ISMB. Please contact Madeline for that. I have a little details at the end as well. Today, we'll talk with the lightning talks, basically starting off uh, to get you thinking about the small group discussions. The first one is about AI and ML, um, lessons learned from Yang Fan. Uh, we will then talk about uh, single cell analysis and sort of what that means for a core facility. This can be wrapped up into sort of one discussion group. Re reproducibility using um, cloud tools 
uh, and how to sort of do that with Conda and Bioconda. Project management, training, and training. So um, we'll, we'll talk about all, all of these, but start thinking about how you want to and sort of what special group, special breakout group you, you want to jump into. Dinner uh, on Wednesday is with the European Biomax Core community as well, a joint dinner at Veranda Pelicano. Address uh, is there. It's probably about a 20 to 25 minute walk from here. Uh, we plan to meet downstairs if you want to walk with us at 7.30 um, in, in front. Well, I guess it's not downstairs. It's right out here. We're on the ground floor. Um, at 7.30, or you can meet at the restaurant. Uh, it's a buffet. It's fixed cost, but all you can eat at the buffet, 30, $36. Uh, looks, looks pretty nice. And I think that is it. So we'll get started. Uh, with Yang Fan. Yang. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks to organizer. And I'm here to share you with you, and hopefully many of you are uh, cool about Informico may have to run through in the next few years. And these are lessons learned. Uh, and I don't mean to take up the whole 10 minutes. And I'll try to run through the slides, and I'll leave as much time as you uh, may need it uh, until my time ends. I'm from NIH and run uh, the IT and bioinformatical and other, other uh, NHY projects. So this is my disclaimer. As so all we as a good federal employee will have to do. So here, I don't have to do for this core uh, uh, group or group. These are many of the uh, analysis we do as a bioinformatical and of course it's not an in, uh, extensive list and we start moving to single cell, and many of our, uh, we call biomedical informatic project. So the, the, in the initiative actually transitioned the bioinformatical to, into the machine learning AI start about two years ago. So these are the uh, trends uh, on coming uh, NIH initiative, and if you sort of pay attention to where NIH is living, to, these are many examples uh, actually running at NIH right now. And these are not, again, uh, extensive lists, but tell you many of the things we do from radiology, pathology, many of the uh, 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 medical informatics type of thing, and including the uh, uh, basic science side of it, and uh, single cell megagenomics, a bit, uh, uh, as you name it. So for a transition to uh, bioinformatics into a data called the data science project, and these are not uh, really a highlight, but sort of summarize the overall arc is, uh, uh, sort of thing uh, that involved with the data science. All the data science project, including uh, uh, many of our bioinformatic uh, related AI, uh, actually started with big data. And these data, as you will encounter, many of your core had to deal with, all had to relate it to high quality data set. And this is difficult, and itself could be a workshop itself. And I won't touch many of the things because one of the slides I'll summarize many of the challenges that relate to the data science that do relate to the data set. But regardless, once you get the high quality data set, and we are not talking about hundreds and thousands, and when you involve with medical data set, these are hundred thousand and above. Okay, so that's a scale you have to deal with uh, when you go into the machine learning and AI uh, arena. So once you have a high quality data set, Again, like many of our informed projects, you have to do strategic analysis. Now you have to do a machine learning algorithm, what tools that you really have to pick to be able to uh, uh, work out what you uh, angle for the machine learning project has to be, and we'll talk about it later on. 
And many of our informed tools deal with visualization. And we are very good at those creating uh, some of the uh, visualization for our project. And the end goal is that you find something new, a new discovery. And for the AI, you may start to develop tool like, into what you want to do to advance the medical care, as we do as one of our mission. This will transi transition you from the bioinformatic, uh, we call it big data, into called AI artificial intelligence. So in the next uh, couple of slides, I'll show you one of our projects, which initiated us and prompted us to move from traditional bioinformatic analysis, what you see in the summarized earlier, into more of a biomedical uh, 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 thing. So this is the first big data set. And since I'm coming from a neurological, uh, neurological disorder institute, stroke is one of our largest uh, uh, research portfolio <laughs> program in our intramural. So the larger data set, as you, many of you know about the stroke disease, is number three killer in the United States. And for the age population in the CMS, uh, Medicare, Medi-Ed, it's about 4% of our age population all have stroke. So it's the number one disability uh, disease you know, across the nation and in the world. So once you have it, it's terrible, so you better have it. So the project we have, we have a larger data set, which I'll go into the next uh, slide to describe to you uh, what the data set we may have. So the end goal for this one is actually using the machine learning. And the end goal for us in the larger data set, and I don't know if I have it here. So the end goal is really for us. So when you get a data set, you start to integrate the whole data set. You start to find out there are discrepancy between, of course, the data set itself, which is what we call the data quality. But you also realize the entire across the nation, at least the United States, the 1,000 part of our population has worse uh, outcome than the north and east side of it. So you ask a question, why? Are we not been having the standard stroke care across the nation? So from the data, you can learn lots of about the disease across the population. Okay, so the end goal is if we can find the tool, as we are good at uh, uh, developing uh, a tool in the bioinformatics, can we do something about this uh, end goal which are built? So now the, end, so the starting question is what data do you have to be able to start? But obviously, you need to understand how the stroke patient come into the ER and being triaged and into the outcome. So here's a list of sort of very simplified diagram. The QER, meaning your stroke patient, uh, often in the midnight, at the most inconvenient time, you go into the ER. The, the, the physician have to start diagnosis. The two main types, although there are four or five different subtypes, of the stroke is ischemic and hemorrhage. Either you have an internal bleeding or your ischemic or blockage in your uh, blood vessel that cause the stroke. So the diagnosis itself is already an AI. So many uh, scientists in the world start using imaging, whether you have a CT, MRI, to be able to diagnose. The typical time in the ER depends on where you are. Your CT scan result, really from a radiology, could range from quickest 15 minutes to about 45 minutes. So that time of, uh, could be saved if you have an AI tool to be able to go from uh, uh, tens of minutes into less than a minute, okay? So the physician knows what your subtype of stroke is. So you have many of our clinical ass assessments, and now the, the, uh, the physician has to figure out the uh, treatment. So there are different strip, uh, treatment options, medicines, and everything else option available to the physician to be able to treat different types of stroke. So once you have a stroke, you produce outcome. Very obviously, you wanted the best outcome for the patient. So that's where the machine learning AI comes in. So this entire uh, scheme form uh, queue triage to the outcome is actually doing what we call a decision support uh, AI. Okay. So this AI is not the best for the disease. Very obviously, you want to be able to predict and prevent the stroke. That's the best you could do. But that data set is not what is within the ER. Okay, so you have a lifestyle, you have prior medical history, you have a physical exam, everything you do prior to having a stroke. These are very good uh, data set to have, uh, to be able to. Very obviously, regardless, when you have the stroke, you want to do the best to uh, recover. So that's another step of it. 
and you have to do the KLM. The data set includes all your medical profile, your diagnosis, your EHR data, image, very obvious outcome, and your follow-up and everything related to your genomics, and we can talk about that. Good, okay, so let's duplicate. So what data set do we have right now uh, to, to be able to work on? And so this is collaborator uh, in Taiwan has called the TSR registry, has our, right now 140,000 uh, medical history from the patient coming to ER and the prior medical history to the follow-up up to one year. So that's the data set in here, very rich. Uh, this, you know, in Taiwan, uh, intramural, uh, we are very uh, study based. So our po uh, study population is a lot smaller, unlike in the hospital, because most of what we do are research based. So this has about 16,000 patients. We have about 45,000 from all the NINDS uh, funded trial, and this is public data set you could obtain if you did, that wish to have. Been working with Japan TRI and try to get a US uh, CMS data uh, to add it to our data set. And very obviously for the imaging, we have imaging data set uh, uh, coming from a BD2K funding. So this is a more of a summarized slide, and I could spend hours on this one, but I'd rather have you guys uh, sort of ask questions. So when you start an AI project, MI machine learning project, or we call it a data science project, this is really you need to think about what you want and what current challenge you have in there. Okay, so this including you want to develop a tool, you actually have a product you want to go through FDA, or you actually just want a publication. So every group, that's it differently. But important part is what data set you really have to be able to fulfill what you're trying to solve that challenge on. Okay, again, emphasize the quality and quantity. And very obviously, when you work on a data set, you know big data and larger data set is not necessarily better. It's a high quality data set counts, okay? So now you have to figure out what ML algorithm, what tool to test and use. And these are very uh, data set dependent. One of the examples, some of the data say in the medical data set are time series. That means your patient coming with a time that you're taking data on. So their machine algorithm are very sensitive to the time series. So you're using the wrong one for the wrong time and you know what, what happened. Okay. So the potential barrier to overcome these very obviously depends on your funding, your staff, infrastructure, and everything else. And also, is your group self sufficient? Uh, unlike NIH, we have most of our data we need it, but most of the institution you have may depend on working, collaborate with other institutions with different data sources, and you have to spend time doing the integration, data harmonization, and all everything else go with it. And you also very obviously have to deal with regulatory uh, for the data set, and what skill set you have in your team currently have you have to move from traditional bioinformatics into medical informatics. So these are the things in there. So these are uh, summarized what we have. Before we have a bioinformatics core, and then now we add in the data science algorithm team. And the data science really are the domain knowledge uh, expert collaborator you're gonna have. For people who like the big data, these are the summary of uh, uh, big data we have, open, share, data repository at NIH, and you can grab as many as you like. Okay, thank you. And here's my email. Great, thank you. Next we'll have Shannon Ho Sui uh, from the Harvard School of Public Health talking about uh, single cell analyses. Let's see, core single cell. PowerPoint. Oh, yeah, sorry.